In this lesson we're going to look at the transformations of sine and cosine functions and we started off with just a basic sine curve and a basic cosine curve. But we can alter um, these graphs by looking at a new form of an equation, y equals a sine and then in parentheses bx minus c plus d. So each of these letters, these variables, the a, the b, the c, and the d, are going to change the graph in certain ways. And we'll start by looking at these on a, on a graphing calculator and then we'll transfer the graphs onto the paper. If you don't have a graphing calculator it's okay. You can just watch um, as I graph them. And you know it's nice to have one so you can explore but if you don't in the end you're going to have to graph these by hand just like everybody else so um, that's fine. So I'm going to start by graphing. We'll look at number one. We're going to graph, we're just looking at equations in the form of y equals a sine x and y equals a cosine x. So we're only changing that the variable in front of uh, sine and we'll deal with these other transformations later. So I want to graph y equals sine x and y equals 2 sine x on my calculator. So I'm going to graph, I, I want to be, check your mode, you want to get this back in function mode, we're going to be in radians and we should be back to sequential. So you'd want to arrow down and hit enter and highlight. Remember we were in parametric mode last time. We're going to go into y equals and I'm going to start by graphing just a sine of x and then I want to graph the 2 sine x, which is right here. And so that I can tell the difference between them, I'm going to arrow over to the left of the y sub 2. I'm going to hit enter until I get the thick line, right? Last time we used the line with the circle at the end. Now we can change our window by going into the window feature and doing negative 2 pi to 2 pi. But there's a faster way of doing that by just hitting zoom 7. Zoom 7 is a trig, um, gives you a nice trig graph. It'll give you from negative 2 pi to 2 pi in your window. That's the sine curve and now y equals 2 sine x. So when we look, I'll transform these graphs onto the graph paper here and then we'll talk about them. So I'll graph the original graph in, um, in blue and then I'll graph the transformation in red. So I've marked off the, um, the values that we're going to um, use to graph. And so I'm going to graph the y equals sine x first. So I know it has zeros at the beginning halfway and at the end and it has a max a quarter of the way of one and a min three quarters of the way of negative one and so I graph and then I'll do the same thing from negative two pi to zero max three quarters of the way of one min three quarters of the way of negative one so when I multiplied the function by two the maximum value changed and so instead of, let's pull that back up again, right? At pi over 2 we were no longer up 1, we were up 2. So this is a vertical stretch, you've seen this before. So the new graph is going to look almost exactly the same. The only thing that was affected was the max and the min. And so my zeros were still the same. My new graph was a vertical stretch. Um, let's do the same with the from negative 2 pi to 0. Zeros are the same. And so by multiplying that the sine curve by 2 we have vertically stretched. And so I'm going to leave the word amplitude blank for a second. I'll explain that in a minute. But the period hasn't changed. It's still 2 pi. This is for the y equals 2 sine x. The maximum value is now 2. The minimum value is now negative 2. The amplitude, I'm going to write down the definition here. So it's half the distance from the min to the max. Or you take your, um, just subtract the maximum value minus the minimum and divide by 2. So 4 divided by 2 is 2. 
but it's basically at an amplitude. It is a magnitude. It is a distance. The distance from here is just the x-axis to the max value, which is the same as the distance from the x-axis to the minimum value. But to find the amplitude, you literally just take the absolute value of a. a was the value that we um, that we changed. We let uh, a equal two, so the absolute value of two is equal to two. All right, let's look at the next one. All right, now let's graph um, y equals cosine x and y equals one half cosine x on the calculator. So we'll go into our y equals. We'll keep the window the same. We'll do cosine x, and then one half. We could just do 0 0.5 cosine x. We're still in radian mode. Um, we have the thicker graph for the second function. You can do a zoom seven. And now it's graphing our cosine curve from negative 2 pi to 2 pi. And here comes the transformed. And so I think, you know, from graphing your exponential functions and uh, functions from pre-calc 1, you know that when you multiply a function by a half, you're getting a, a vertical shrink. And so let's, I'm going to transform these graphs. Again, I'm going to draw them both on this, um, on this axis. My original graph of cosine, just to practice, we know that cosine has zeros at a quarter and three quarters of the period. It has a max at the beginning and a max at the end of one cycle, and it has a min halfway. And so here I am graphing my y equals the cosine, right? I'll do the same from negative 2 pi to 0. Now, what happened was that where I used to have a max of 1, if we go back and look at the graph, we now have a max of a half. So we'll mark off a half here. Uh, instead of going down negative, negative 1, my minimum is going to be negative a half. Same thing over here, negative a half, but my max is positive a half. Right, this is a half. And right here, positive a half. The zeros are exactly the cha same, they haven't changed. So I I connect with a nice smooth curve, and there is a vertical shrink. Now my amplitude, we said, was the absolute value of a, which the absolute value of 1 half is a half. The period hasn't changed, it's still 2 pi, but the max value is now a half, and the min is negative a half. And so we're going to use uh, generally what I have people do is when you're asked to graph a transformation, I have you graph the original function lightly and then go ahead and alter it and graph your final, just like we did with exponential graphs and log graphs. We use like a broken line. All right, let's try one more, a different value of a. We want to graph y equals sine x and y equals negative sine x. And so right now the value of a is actually equal to negative 1. So we'll pull up the calculator. We'll go in and change that first one to sine x. The ne second graph will be negative sine x. And before you even graph it, you know enough about transformations that you should have an expectation of what that graph is going to look like. You know, ask yourself, what does multiplying a function by negative 1 do? If you remember, that, that should be a reflection over the x-axis. So let's go ahead and graph it on the calculator. Here's my sine function. But I got a syntax error. I see it. I have uh, an extra set of parentheses there I did not see. I'm going to delete that out. And the reason why I have not edited out my errors is because these are the kind of mistakes that a lot of people make, and I want to make sure you, you know, if you do them, you'd understand how to fix them. So a syntax error just means that you, you know, you may have used a the subtraction sign instead of a negative sign, or an, you have an extra parenthesis in there, which is what we had. So we'll go ahead and graph those again. So we can see our original graph of sine of the sine function, and then we have the negative sine function is just a reflection over the x-axis. So what's now happening is the zeros again have not been affected. Where you used to have a max, you now have a min. So any positive values on the graph 
are now negative. And any negative values on the graph, negative y values, are now positive. That's your reflection. So let's graph, I'll graph both of these on the, on the graph paper. And then when I take the negative, I'm going to graph that in green, wherever I had a max, I now have a min. I'm just changing the sign. Where I had negative 1, I'm now going to have positive 1. Where I had a positive 1, I have a negative 1. Where I had a negative 1, I now have a positive 1. So I have a reflected graph. So the green is the graph of y equals negative sine x, right? The blue was the graph of sine x. Uh, the values over here to the these values should be the graph of the transform graph. So the amplitude, well, it's, it's a magnitude. It is the absolute value of negative 1, which is 1. The period is still the same. And my max and min values are actually the same. It's just where they occur has changed, right? My maximum value is still 1, and my minimum value is still negative 1. Take a minute to explain in your own words. So I would, I would pause the video. Um, take a minute to explain in your own words how, how A, the letter A, affects the graphs of sine x and cosine x. Try to use, you know, appropriate vocabulary, mathematical vocabulary uh, in your description. And then what I'd like you to do is graph on your own y equals negative 2 cosine x by hand without using a graphing calculator. If you would like to graph the cosine function first, um, that's a good idea. You just want to make sure that they're a different color. Um, or that you can distinct so that you can distinguish a different color and maybe use a pen and a pencil um, or graph the cosine curve with a broken line and your final graph with a solid line. The value of a affects the, the amplitude of the graph. Uh, we can say that when the absolute value of a is greater than 1 you have a vertical stretch and when the absolute value of a is less than 1 you have a vertical shrink and the sine of a, so when a is negative, the original graph is reflected over the x-axis. All right, so let's graph y equals negative 2 cosine x by hand. What I'm going to do is I'm going to graph cosine. I'll graph it in purple, lightly. So I'm going to just graph a basic cosine curve from 0 to 2 pi. I know that the cosine, and we'll mark this as uh, 1, okay. and I know this is pi over 2 and this is 3 pi over 2. Down here would be negative 1. So I'm going to graph lightly. I'm going to say I, I know that cosine has its zeros at 3 quarters of the way, at a quarter of the way and 3 quarters of the way. It has a max at the beginning and at the end, and it has a min halfway. And so you can connect these if you want with a broken line or just leave them as, a, as reference points. What I know is that the, the negative is going to reflect my graph, but not only is it going to reflect it, it's going to stretch it. And so where I used to have a minimum, I'm now going to have a maximum, but it's not going to be 1, it's going to be 2. So we'll graph this one in green. So where I had a negative 1, I'm now going to have a positive 2. I am reflecting and I am stretching. Where I had a positive 1, had I just put a negative in, I would get a negative 1, but I put a negative 2 in, so I'm now going to have negative 2. Where I had a positive 1, I'm now going to have a negative 2. And my zeros are exactly the same. Zeros are not affected. So I graph by connecting a nice smooth curve. So the final graph. The amplitude is the absolute value of 2, which is 2. The period is still 2 pi. My maximum value is 2, and my minimum value is negative 2. In the next video, we're going to look at uh, changes in B, how that, how that affects the graph.